Dr. Martin Luther King said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in the moment of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at a time of challenge and controversy. He was right. The educators we are here to celebrate today are individuals who know how to rise to a challenge. Good afternoon and welcome to the 57th Annual Gerstecker Teacher Award Program. My name is Viola Collin and I'm the president of the Midland City Education Association, representing the teaching and special services staff for Midland Public Schools. I am pleased to co-sponsor this event with the Midland Public Schools Board of Education. This program is one of the highlights of our school year, a time to honor our retiring staff, recognize years of service to the students in our community, and applaud four of our finest educators as winners of the Gerstager Teacher Proficiency Award. I agree with Dr. Martin Luther King. This is definitely a challenging time in public education, but it can be a great opportunity to work together and to show our community where we stand during this challenging time. You may ask, where do we stand? And what are the goals of our educators? I can stand here with great confidence today and assure you that the educators in Midland Public Schools are all, and all the wonderful staff that support us are about providing an exemplary school education for all of your students. This is our focus today. This has clearly been our focus in the past and will can continue to be our goal in the future. Our community has learned to depend on the high quality of education we provide despite our challenges. And we will continue to make every effort to deliver a quality program to our students. Midland Public Schools still ranks as one of the most decorated districts in the state and the nation. Not only for our student academic achievement, but for their extracurricular activities as well. The professionalism and dedication that are the hallmark of this award and of our staff overall are why we are here today. Of course, None of the success could be possible without the overwhelming support of our parents, support staff, and community members. And we thank and appreciate all of you. I know in my heart, we are a community that will never give up on supporting quality public education for all of our students. Like the unwavering dedication of our educators, this program has been one of the constants in our school year. One of the things we can count on. One of the things that reminds us of the outstanding performance of our staff and students delivered on a daily basis. I believe that no other profession does more to change people for the better. Educators uplift, prepare, and inspire their students for what lies ahead. They spend countless hours of their professional time money and energy to make sure their job is done right. Our current climate demands teachers to do more with less, and these demands only increase each and every year. These are some of the reasons I believe teaching is the most noblest of professions and has to be a true calm because it is often a thankless job. But when the rewards come, they are richer beyond any monetary gain one could ever imagine. We may never know the full impact we make in the lives of our students entrusted to us. It is an awesome responsibility. The teachers being honored today do not only represent a, the precious resource a dedicated teacher is, but also what they value and support quality education for our youth. And that is the only way all of our lives will improve for the better. Shortly, you will hear some stories that are a perfect example of how outstanding educators continue to shine despite the challenging times we are facing. I hope our winners can appreciate their accomplishments 
and the end, this recognition. But most of all, appreciate how their legacy of service will live now on in all the children they have taught. Speaking <coughs> of legacy and service, I ask you to take a moment to look in your program and view the names in your program where we celebrate previous Gerstecker winners, dating back when the Gerstecker family established this award in 1956. On this list are some of the finest professionals to ever grace this community with their passion for teaching. I wish to thank the Gerstecker family for their ongoing support of our schools and many of their partners <coughs> in our community. Currently, the first position of our, or during the first position of our program this afternoon, we honor years of service to public education. These service years may be in the middle of public schools, in other districts, in our state, or around the nation. They, might, they may also be as a teacher, a counselor, a therapist, or an administrator. Each of the individuals I'm about to acknowledge will receive a certificate and a pin from the Midland City Education Association indicating their years of service. This recognition will take place at many of the end-of-year programs at individual buildings. I would like to ask each of these individuals to stand and be recognized. Please hold your applause until each group is standing. If you are celebrating 25 years of service in public education, would you please stand? If you are celebrating 30 years, would you please stand? Thank you, Vi. Um, like Vi, I'm also so very pleased to participate in this event in recognition just of the excellence that Midland Public Schools continues on an annual basis to provide to our students and education in the county. It's leadership that happens not only in the classroom, but really we influence education in a significant way, I think, in some of the districts around us, and that makes me so proud to be part of this organization. It's my honor to introduce to you uh, once again uh, for her at least the annual pilgrimage to uh, Midland Public Schools, Lisa Gerstecker. Lisa, would you stand? <laughs> of course, on behalf of the Board of Education in the district, we thank the Gerstecker <laughs> Foundation for your support of uh, quality education here for Midland Public Schools. Some of you may not have known, but Lisa just arrived and just got off the plane about 30 or 40 minutes ago, so she's happy to uh, join us here as quickly as she could. I'd like to recognize 10 individuals um, and ask them once we get to this portion of the agenda to come up here, and then we'll recognize them with a few brief comments about uh, what role they have served for Midland Public Schools. I'm glad to be here today as we celebrate and honor the wonderful Midland Public Schools teachers that we have working for us. It is truly my pleasure to express my appreciation and say a heartfelt thank you to our teachers and staff members who are on the front line working with and making a difference in the lives of our Midland Public School students each and every day. John Adams once said, let us tenderly and kindly cherish, therefore, the means of knowledge. Let us dare to read, think, speak, and write. Some things throughout history haven't changed in education. Teachers still facilitate students in learning how to read, think, speak, 
and right. Our teachers are hardworking, dedicated, inventive, inspired resources who impart knowledge, tools, and skills every student needs to be successful, contributing members of the 21st century workplace. We all know, however, that there is so much more today in education besides teaching our students to read, think, speak, and write. We ask our students, we ask our educators to change, <coughs> assess, grow, assess, <laughs> adapt to new technology that changes at the speed of light, assess, <laughs> do more with less, and then assess how well that's working, and so much more. In recent years, we've been living through some very bumpy roads in our district and for the funding of education in the state of Michigan. John Quincy Adams once said, patience and per perseverance have a magical effect before which difficulties disappear and obstacles vanish. Thank you for your patience and for persevering. Thank you for being a professional educator who stays positive and keeps their focus on his or her students and the goals at hand. Thank you for allowing our students to experience the excellence that has long been the rich heritage that is Midland Public Schools. You are truly appreciated. This evening, we want to send our sincere thanks and very best wishes to our 10 retirees for sharing their combined 254 years of service in public education with students, families, and staff of Midland Public Schools. You will certainly be missed. Now, if they're with us um, this afternoon, could we have Beth Boyer join us up front? Beth is not here, but she's retiring as a physical education teacher with Midland Public Schools. Before coming to MPS, Beth taught at Sheboygan Area Schools, Valley Lutheran, and Grace Lutheran. Beth's career with Midland Public Schools began in 1990, and in addition to her PE teaching responsibilities, Beth has coached volleyball and track for MPS. Beth has been with us for 29 years, or been an educator for 29 years. Elizabeth Evans. <coughs> 32 years of service for Elizabeth. Betsy's retiring from her position as an occupational therapist in the Special Services Department of Midland Public Schools. Betsy joined MPS in 1979 and has worked with students in both the special ed and regular ed programs of most, if not all, of Midland Public Schools buildings, as well as some of the parochial buildings here in Midland. Congratulations, Beth, on a successful <laughs> Thank you. James Ferency. Jim is retiring from his position of social studies teacher at H.H. Dow High School. Before coming to MPS, Jim taught at Dearborn Public Schools. His MPS career began in 1988, and in addition to teaching at Dow High, Jim also taught at Northeast Middle School, Leopard, and besides his teaching responsibilities, he's coached the Dow High and Jefferson Boys and Girls track season. Again, 29 years for Mr. Ferencsen. <laughs> Barb Haynes, Barb, are you with us? Barb is retiring from her position of physical education teacher with Midland Public Schools. Barbara began her career in 1983. The vast majority of Barbara's NPS career has been spent in the Central Middle School building. However, she has also taught PE at Carpenter, East Lawn, and Jefferson. In addition to her PE teaching responsibilities, Barbara has served as Central's Assistant Athletic Director, Activities Director, and coach volleyball, basketball, swimming, and intramural sports, recognizing Barb for 28 years of service. <laughs> Della Keyword. Della is retiring from the math department at H.H. Dow High School. She began her MPS career in 1992. When it comes to math at Dow High School, you name it, Della has probably taught it. Her entire MPS career was spent teaching math at Dow, but before coming to MPS, Della taught in Republic, Michigan, and Dayton, Ohio, and she served as an educator for 23 years. Mike 
McKenna. Mike is retiring from his position of physical education teacher with MPS. What's going on with PE here? <laughs> Mike's employment with MPS began in 1990 when he was hired to teach PE at Northeast Intermediate School. And throughout his MPS career, he has worked with students in the physical education program at the elementary, middle, and high school levels. In addition to his PE teaching responsibility, Mike coached wrestling and football, and he served for 25 years as an educator. Congratulations. <laughs> Ellen Owen. Ellen is retiring from her position as music teacher with Midland Public Schools. She began her career with MPS in 1989, and while at MPS, Ellen has shared her love of music with students listen to this list, at Carpenter, Chestnut Hill, Chippewasi, Seabird, Woodcrest, Ashman, Jefferson, Northeast, and Midland High. <laughs> Surprised she hasn't been superintendent. Of all <laughs> Before coming to MPS, Alan taught at Bullet Creek, CMU, Midland Montessori, and St. Bridget. This is truly a dedicated individual, as many of us in this room know, to, show, to the children that she has served for 27 years. Quality staff at Midland Public Schools only makes that selection and recognition, recognition of those outstanding individuals more difficult. Before we bring the winners up, I'd like to thank several people who make this program possible today, who made it possible. 
First, my fellow First Decker committee members. Mr. Rigoli, Treasurer of the Middle Public Schools Board of Education. Ms. Tracy Renko, Principal of Chestnut Hill Elementary. Previous First Decker winner, Mr. Steve Therese, Dow High Band Director. Thank you also to our Arrangements Committee, which is Sue Arndt, Michelle Meitler, Sarah, Sarah Pancost, Carol Bremer, Melinda Blogger, and Patricia Steele. And the person who makes so much of this happening, happen, scheduling our meetings and planning the activities at this facility and doing a variety of other things, Ms. Kathy Hawkins Logo. Some of you know, 
has fallen head over heels for the daughter of a teacher, <laughs> of a Gerstacker award-winning teacher. So I'm still figuring out how to handle that. So that is my experience as a community member with teachers. And I recognize that my life has been a good life, in fact, because, in fact, because I spent many years with and around teachers. Now, my second vantage point, obviously, is as a board member. And in 50 days, I will complete it 20 years as a board member of this wonderful school district. So obviously, I've seen a lot of things, as many of you have, over 20 years. I have um, been around long enough to see enrollment and staffing increases, as well as enrollment and staffing decreases. I've been around long enough to see programs added, as well as programs curtailed. I've been around long enough to see millage increases as well as funding decreases. I've been around long enough to see building additions as well as building closures. I've been around long enough to see no computer labs, no computers, versus computer lab in every building and we have a thousand computers now. I remember, Franklin computers. <laughs> So the other thing I've learned as a board member is that education is a team sport, and it's all about connections. And it's all about connections with all the various people that come into play in order to provide the kind of education we all provide to our kids. And it's connections with people like bus drivers, and custodians, and building managers, and food service workers, and counselors, and administrators, and people in the business office, current professionals, and of course teachers. And we all know that the most important connection, the reason why most of the rest of us exist, is because of the connection in the classroom between the teacher and the student. That is the most connection, the most important connection that exists. And it's a lifelong connection, a lifelong connection. Now, maybe the most important vantage point I have is as a parent. And I have been an MPS parent for 25 years. And I'm looking around the room, and I see many teachers that uh, took care of my children for me. Um, I have had the opportunity to chat with my kids about many of you. And uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say every day, I just can't do that. <laughs> but I've been privileged to know so many of you. Um, in fact, I experienced MPS teachers almost from A to Z. Albright, Brewer, Camilleri, Dow, Edelbrock, Fleck, Gunther, Hollenbeck, Ehrman, Jones, Krauss, Larson, Mulvaney, Neff, I don't have no old Poole, Quimby, Rice, Spencer, Trukuki, Unkovich, View, Willannon, Yoder, and Zelensky. I don't have an X either, other than X stands for excellence, right? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> and my kids have done exceedingly well in high school and college. And as much as I would like to think that some of the credit goes to their parents, at least their mother, I recognize that most of the credit goes to the teachers to the more than 200 teachers that my kids had in Midland Public Schools. In fact, 20 of the teachers are your sector workers. So I have seen teachers through the eyes of my kids, and I have seen my kids through the eyes of the teachers <laughs> as well. So my older, oldest daughter, Katie, she goes by Kat for now, but I'll never forget Katie, and all of you know her is Katie. Katie spent five years teaching early elementary in Raleigh Durham. She is now working on her dissertation for a PhD in early child development and literacy. And she will tell you that much of her self-confidence comes from Carol Neff, who taught her the importance of setting goals and taught her how to be assertive and to stand up for others. My other daughter, Laura, she will talk to you about the experience of being in the classroom of Ramona Jones. Can I get a cup of water for me? Let me get a water here. And Ramona Jones, she will tell you how much she enjoyed going to Mrs. Jones' classroom. Because you see, Mrs. Jones had very high expectations. 
but she also valued the relationship she had with her kids. And she instilled the spirit of learning is fun in my daughter. And my daughter, who's 25 today, will tell you how much she looked forward to walking to Mrs. Jones' class and put a smile on her face as it did the other students <coughs> that went to Mrs. Jones' class. My youngest son, Ryan, who's 21, and some of you remember him as a short little nerdy kind of guy with braces, six foot two. He and his two best friends, all of which go to Michigan State, just finished their junior year of last year. All three of them, all from Minnesota Public Schools, have just completed the third year with perfect 4.0 GPAs. It's not because any magic <coughs> like Ryan did. It's because of the preparation they had from all of you. And Ryan will talk about Mrs. Brewer, <coughs> talking about the foundation that she built for him to this day in seventh grade English in Northeast. And how he still goes back to the things he learned in class. And he still tells me about how he hung around after class, believe it or not, to talk about vocabulary words. <laughs> and to talk about comma rules. I, I can tell you one rule about commas. And about the game she used to play called Vocabulary Live. And he'll tell you about Mrs. Connie Altimore. And the reputation she had as a very hard teacher, but she always also was extremely well liked. Sometimes a difficult combination of those kind of teachers. And he will tell you about the things he learned as she took her students on a journey across America and how she would dress up in character to demonstrate whatever the message was she was telling about history that day. My oldest son, Nathan, he will talk about the wonderful life lessons he learned from Anna Unkovich. In America, all my kids will talk about life lessons from Anna Unkovich. And he'll talk about how Anna Unkovich talked about the spirit of team, how important team was, and how important it was to have goals and to stand up for what you believe in. He would also tell a story about his last day in high school. And he went over to Chestnut Hill to visit with Mary Larson, the second grade teacher. You can see Mary Larson told him, yeah, it was important to be smart, but it's more important to be a good person. That's what he learned from Mary Larson. So you think about Carol Neff, you think about Ramona Jones, and you think about Connie Altimore, Kelly Brewer, and Mary Larson, and you talk about Yankovic. And what do they all have in common? They're all beer stacker award winners. Every one of them. Because see, my kids realize and I recognize that all of you, you teach more than words and numbers and pictures and notes, more than just facts and figures. Because you teach our kids how to learn. You encourage creativity. You inspire confidence. You stimulate thought and ideas. You still a work ethic. You teach them how to dream and reach and stretch. You teach them the importance of self-respect and team. You teach them about respect and caring and be considerate. You teach them to be open-minded. You teach them how much fun it is to learn. That's what you do. That's what you did for my kids. That's what you do for kids all across the district. And so how does this all this happen? It doesn't happen by accident. <coughs> It happens because you'll need to make a difference because of preparation and because of investment. So before you can make a difference in kids' lives, you have to make a difference in your own life. And how do you do that? Because you have to prepare. And before you prepare, you have to have the will to prepare. You have the desire to do something better. And so you prepare. And how do you prepare? You prepare by investing time, energy, and resources to kind of go up an extra notch. Because you all come out with a certificate or a license as your teacher, but we all know it doesn't stop there. It's only the beginning of your journey. And so many of you here, especially the four people we're going to honor today, know what it takes to invest the time to go to the next level so you can make even a bigger difference in all the kids you teach. You probably have um, all heard us speak of kinds of people. <coughs> There's the people that pass the time and wonder what the heck happened. There's people that spend the time to watch things happen. And then here's Deborah Warren winners, and many of you, who invest the time to make things happen. There is a um, wonderful book um, that I enjoy a great deal that I highly recommend. I want to read just an excerpt of it from you, because it really applies to what we're talking about today. And the book is called, Even Eagles Need a Push, Learning to Soar in a Changing World. Its underlying theme is about developing confidence in your abilities to inspire you to greater heights, to have a sense of purpose, 
a belief that you are important, that your life matters, to recognize that success, satisfaction, and fulfillment are the rewards for contributing gifts and talents towards something that makes a difference. And they tell the story about the eagle, the baby eagle. Like a baby eagle in his nest who was told by his mom to come to the edge, and he responds, no, it's too high. Again, the mother says, come to the edge. And once again, the baby says, no, I might fall. One more time, he's invited to come to the edge. And he comes. You see, the mother eagle knows that until her offspring discovers their wings, there's no purpose to their lives. And until they learn how to soar, they will fail to understand the privilege it was to have been an eagle. The push was the greatest gift she had to offer. And then the baby eagle is pushed out, and he flies, and he soars, and yes, even eagles need a push. And you are all eagles. See, there's a couple analogies there. One is that you are all eagles, and until you take the next step to invest the time to prepare, you're not justifying the privilege of being an eagle. And maybe even more importantly, all the kids you teach are eagles. And you prepare them. You prepare them to fly. And then in your own way, you kind of push them out. And then they fly. And they realize the dream of what it's like to be an eagle. Because you're in effect where that mother eagle is secure. You all leave footprints, large footprints. And your stacker winners leave even larger footprints. Because three weeks from tomorrow, we're going to be watching all of our seniors walk across the stage at the two high schools. And they're going to be walking across the stage following your footprints that you've left for them to follow. And we all know that the bigger and the deeper the footprints are, if you're walking a beach, the longer they will last. The easier those footprints are to follow, and the less of a chance that they're going to be washed away. So Gerstecker winners have left footprints. And they've left footprints not only for children or students, but they've left footprints for the rest of all of us to follow. <coughs> so I congratulate the four people who are being honored today. Names yet to be revealed. But with that congratulation comes an accountability and responsibility, maybe even a burden. Number one, you know that you're being honored as the best of the best. You're an elite class. In the public schools has the least group, the least group of teachers. So then to recognize a few people, and it's been 200 over, let's say, the last 50 or 60 years, it's a Hall of Fame. I'm talking about Hall of Fame here. So you should feel proud of the legacy you have left to reach this kind of level. But you have to be accountable. You need to be accountable to the past for staff award winners as well. You have to be accountable to all the other teachers, especially the younger teachers, who now look into you to mentor them to leave footprints for them to follow so one day they can become first staff award winners as well. This is your legacy. You have to be accountable to all the kids. And while you have impacted thousands of kids probably, there's probably many more kids that you're going to impact in the remaining years before you retire. You need to be accountable to yourself. Because you've reached this level of excellence, but you've gotten there because you make yourself better every single day. So today is not the end. Today is not the end of the journey. Because tomorrow, we expect you're going to be better than today, and the day after, and the day after. So that's kind of your challenge. So on behalf of the Board of Education, on behalf of all the parents and all the kids, I congratulate all the Gersecker Award winners that are here. And remember, it's just my vantage point. <laughs> and lastly, I'd like to read something that really applies to all of you, and certainly applies to the four people whose names we're about to announce. But I think it applies to all the teachers in Midland Public Schools. And perhaps you've heard it before. It's called, it's called You're Special, and I'm talking to all of you. It goes like this. You're special. In all the world, there's nobody like you. Since the beginning of time, there's never been a person like you. Nobody has your smile. Nobody has your eyes, your nose, your hair, your hands, your voice. You're special. No one can be found who has your handwriting. Nobody anywhere has your taste for food or music or art. No one sees things just as you do. In all of time, there's been no one who laughs like you, no one who cries like you, and what other, what makes you laugh and cry will never provoke identical laughter and tears from anybody else ever. No one reacts to any situation just as you would react, because you're special. You're the only one in all of creation who has your set of abilities. Oh, there will always be somebody who's better at one of the things you're good at, but no one in the universe can reach the quality of your combinations of talents, ideas, abilities, and feelings. Like a room full of musical instruments, some may excel alone, 
but none can match the symphony sound when all are played together. You're a symphony. And through all of eternity, no one will ever look, talk, walk, think, or do like you. And you're special, and you're rare. And in all rarity, there is great value. And because of your great rare value, you need not attempt to imitate others. You will accept, yes, and celebrate your differences. You're special, and you begin to realize it's no accident that you're special. You're beginning to see that God made you special for a very special purpose. He must have a job for you that no one else can do as well as you. Out of all the billions of applicants, only one is qualified. Only one has the right combination of what it takes. And that one is you. Because you're special. Thank you very much. exciting part of the program on the way. So with that, I would like to uh, ask Mr. Mike Decker, Decker to come on down. Mike. Good afternoon, and thank you. Welcome to the Gerstacker Award Ceremony. And first and foremost, I too would like to thank the Gerstacker family for this important event and making this possible. Also, I'd like to thank the Board of Education, the Midland City Education Association, and fellow colleagues for recognizing the importance of events such as this. It allows us to recognize those that set the bar very high for the public schools. Also, congratulations to our retirees, the legacy that you set of academic excellence for students at the Midland Public Schools will reach long into their lives, and also for those of us that you have touched along the way. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And speaking of retirees, I have the privilege to welcome Bud Laurie and Ray Fryer back with us. They are former principals at Jefferson Middle School. <laughs> and these two gentlemen have played a crucial role in moving us forward in higher academic excellence and academic achievement and education. So thank you to the two of you. With that being said, I, I had a joke, but I'm going to bypass on the joke here. Uh, I just want to reflect on Mr. Oley's comments. And as he was commenting about softball and everything, I couldn't help but look around the room, and little does he know that we have a Midland Public School softball team. <laughs> and as I look, I see Rick Shaheen, and Steve Poole, and Mr. Trebilcock, and Mr. Scott, and Mr. Tonight, all kind of smiling, but just for the record, gentlemen, what happens at the softball diamond stays at the softball diamond. If you're not on the Board of Education, you do not have that ability to express this. <laughs> Rick used to be in front of this podium a few years ago. It is my privilege to honor one of Jefferson's family tonight for outstanding service to education students, fellow teachers in the middle of the community. What does it take to be the best of the best, you ask? Well, in the spirit of David Letterman, we've compiled the top 10 traits for a great teacher. <laughs> All of these traits are exhibited by our award recipient tonight. So drum roll, please. Number 10. Number 10. A communicator. I've noticed that not one research paper said a trait of good quality teacher was their built-up boards, their tidy rooms, easy grades, ability to write neatly or address well. All the traits dealt with the ability to trigger learning, and thus, the most important trait is the ability to communicate. Number nine, Mr. Troll. Challenging. When a child who has a skillful teacher comes home, they talk about what they learned during that day. They are wild up to learn. They are motivated. They know what they need to be ready, and they have to be ready for the unexpected. Number eight, only the best. Quality teacher will only take the best work. They do not accept bad answers. They do not accept first drafts. They do not accept, accept false excuses. A superior teacher understands what a child needs now and will need in the future. Number seven, diverse. First grade teacher provides an array of methods to learn and appreciates all walks of life. Number six, flexible. They use a newspaper or current event.
Times article to open a child's mind to what's happening in the world, and at times they search for a teachable moment. Number five, humor. First class teachers have a good sense of humor. They make jokes and accept jokes. They use humor to connect to students, and excellent teachers keep the students' attention without fear. Number four, knowledgeable. They possess a deep knowledge of a subject matter. Their bumper sticker reads, this teacher stops for new ideas. <laughs> Number three, create independence. They promote a deeper understanding of concepts and work habits than just learning the curriculum. In other words, they create independence. Number two, high expectations. Great teachers encourage risk taking and they accept errors. Number one, top ten traits, model lifelong learning. They are lifelong learners themselves, and they produce lifelong learners. In other words, the best teacher is always a student. Now that, with all that being said, you can apply those following quotes and traits to what was said by the people who nominated this recipient. They said, they have that certain something that sets him or her apart. Most dedicated professional person that they have ever met. I am in awe of their teaching. They make a tremendous difference in students, academically and socially. Never backs down when there's a need by a student. They inspire students. They exemplify the teaching profession. Amazing talent, creativity, and dedication. Expertise is unquestioned. The epitome of an outstanding, highly committed, and extremely dedicated teacher. A leader among peers. Arrives every morning full of enthusiasm and matches middle school kids' enthusiasm. <laughs> it's in and of itself a challenge. Those of us that are there know. Those of you that haven't been there have no clue. <laughs> Patient and handle students in a calm and caring manner. Dynamic and fun. Goes above and beyond the extra mile for students and staff. And has the insight to recognize the need to honor students that exceed in academics and performance. They promote diversity at the middle school, and they are the master of communicating. So, at this point in time, Mr. Scholl has put together a little uh, uh, prezi, so it's time to hear from those closest to our recipient. <laughs>
Jesus, Mary. You were borderline too, too much information there for a second. I don't know. That's good. Congratulations. Nice to have all of you here. Mike, nice job. All right, Bridget Hockemeyer, come on down. Tracy 
is a wonderful, loving person who gives so much of herself to others. She is definitely a model of excellence in teaching. When teachers wish upon a star, it makes a difference who they are. Caring, sharing, giving <laughs> Hold on. Yes, you know, I'm totally surprised. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I guess the first thing that comes to my mind is my mother of 33 years brought home a lesson plan book in the summertime. I think I was uh, second grade, and a red colored pencil and an old record keeping book. And I thought that had to be the best toy summer because I would pretend I was a teacher. Um, and uh, I still have a thing for red colored pencils, but I only use the computer. And uh, so I've learned a lot of life lessons with my family and I am so surprised right now. And again, I love speaking with children, but I'm very nervous. Um, I've had many, many teaching partners over the years. I think I stopped hard counting at 18. I have made many, many friends while teaching. Um, again, it's just been the highlight of my life. My poor family, having to play school in the basement while I was correcting papers. And, uh, they would do the same. They would play school and my husband wondering when I'm coming home for lunch and I'll just say, don't worry about me. Uh, go ahead and eat without me and just in my classroom, I call it the resort. <laughs> and I guess that goes with traveling and everything. Uh, Mr. Fryer, he was my very first principal. Went to see him here tonight. It was just made my night. I mean, uh, we made it through community center basketball together, and we did bowling together. And I had five principals along the way that. All of them have been very supportive over the years. I've learned a lot through them and with them. Um, so, Mrs. Hoffman wasn't all that honest with me. <laughs> <laughs> but I will forget her. Um, again, I'm, I'm speechless and that doesn't happen very often. But I thank all of you and my family and my friends and 
children that are in the back, and I see some children that have grown up, and I see some other faces now in the back, too, so I'm very blessed. Thank you for your friendships and uh, your guidance and support. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Johnson, Principal of Seabird Elementary. It's my pleasure to be with all of you on this beautiful afternoon, and I too want to thank the Nurse Jackson family so much for this wonderful opportunity for all of us. Thank you. <coughs> the annual Burstacker Awards recognize exemplary teachers. We at Midland Public Schools are truly blessed and fortunate to work with many, many, many outstanding teachers. The teacher being recognized today from Seabird Elementary is simply exceptional. This teacher truly understands what educating children is all about. It is truly an honor to work with her. One of her peers said, she is always aware that she is teaching little people, people that other people love and care about. She realizes that these children are someone's hopes and dreams, and she gently pushes everyone to reach their a parent said, she does an excellent job of teaching them in a way that embraces their individual needs and makes use of every minute of her day to fit in one-on-one -on -one sessions with students to make the most of their time together. Today's award winner from Siebert has a high level of professionalism that she brings to the class in everything she does. She's extremely knowledgeable and well-versed in all aspects of elementary she has a simple grace that is never overbearing. She listens and has the ability to see others' points of view and makes everyone feel valued. She's always willing to do more than her fair share of the work, and she realizes that good results require lots of work. Other comments by her peers include that she's a creative teacher who uses creativity as a vehicle to learn. She's artistic, and she can draw anything anyone asks. She's also energetic. Just try to keep up with her. Our recipient is truly a friend and a supporter of all children. Her team members have created this presentation. <coughs> Places you'll go. There is fun to be done. 
there are tests to be scored, there are books to be read. Oh, the magical things you can do with great four balls will make you the winningest winner of all. Fame, you'll be as famous as famous can be, with the whole MPS watching you win on TV. <laughs> redundant saying that it's easier to stand up in front of little kids than adults it's true <laughs> and I'm looking around the room and I see so many faces that I love um, thanks for my family for coming and it's one of my kids that's great <laughs> and my student teacher my counterpart Emily <laughs> the other P in my pad and my team um, I I love what I do, and I, I feel blessed and, and privileged to do what we do for a living. It's an important job, and it's good work, and well, it's rewarding. My love bucket gets filled every single day by lots of people. Um, I, I'm really fortunate to work on the team of Miller Public Schools. Um, I, I love the, the team I'm working on. is is simply amazing, so thank you, girls, for everything you do. Um, I, I was able to be re-energized this year in teaching with Miss Emily Fitting, my great student teacher, so thank you for that. Um, I, I think I have nothing else to say. And Mr. Opie, you, you made reference that, that teaching is a team sport, and it really is. Um, my husband knows exactly what it's like to be married to a teacher. In fact, he's a pro. He's married to two of us. Um, and my girls know what it's like to have a teaching mom. Sometimes you have to forfeit your mom because she's busy and... They're really gracious about that. Um, thanks to my mom. My mom comes to work with me every single day uh, without pay and with lots of rewards. We love having her here. 
So thanks, thanks to my team, and thank you to the Gerstacker family for, for presenting this award. This is such an honor. Thank you. Special thank you to the Gerstacker family for their continued recognition and appreciation of the outstanding educators that we're honoring today. It is customary for Gerstacker winners to have to wait until the biography and the plaudits are given before the honoree's identity is divulged. It's also customary to use deception and some diversionary tactics to avoid letting the honoree know anything beforehand. Furthermore, it's customary to use clues to lead the audience to the winner. In keeping with the spirit of our winner, I don't do customary very well. <laughs> so Amy Bushy, pay attention. <laughs> because the next few minutes... Anyway, we have a couple things to do to get ready for the one act play um, between 
set design, construction, painting, lighting, sound, costuming, makeup, tickets, programs, other oh, the acting, <laughs> and other stuff I've forgotten. I think we need about four months to get ready for a 15 minute play. <laughs> But we could probably shorten it to 13 minutes, and if we if we use the debaters, we could probably shorten it even more than that. <laughs> All of this stuff. Don't you think that's a lot of time to spend on a play? Well, Mr. Riley always told me, don't ever get wrapped up in Ren Fair and drama and forensics and debate and one act, but I figure if I only sleep about three hours a night, we can get it all done. <laughs> Wait, 
Oh, you'll be right here? Oh, thank you. Hey, I'm outraged that the technology never works for you. I'm here for you. I feel sympathetic. <laughs> and I was promised to do all the work you need until we get this technology thing sorted out. Dang, do what you gotta do. <laughs>
and Midland Public Schools and this Midland community. Ladies and gentlemen, the very deserving First Actor Teacher Proficiency Award winner, Mrs. Amy Ott. see the award? He's like, no, I have a meeting. I was like, really? <laughs> you duped me again. So um, I'm glad I had that great acting to kind of pull it together. Um, I don't know what to say other than uh, I, I grew up in Midland and I knew the Gerstackers and they were a tremendous couple and a tremendous influence on me and my family and they were very humble people and very dedicated to Midland. I remember being like seven and my class went down and we collected, collected pennies to build the Tridge. And that's what I grew up with in Midland. And I kind of took that for granted. And then I wanted to leave like most kids do that grow up in Midland. <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna go, never come back. Um, <laughs> and I got to Albion. And what I realized really quickly was what a great education I had gotten in Midland Public Schools. And one of my teachers, who would go on later to be the first person that interviewed me and hired me, Gary Blindy, um, was an amazing teacher who taught me how to write. And it was very apparent within the first few weeks at Albion that we knew how to write better than anybody else did, the kids who went to middle and public schools. Um, and I guess I just didn't really realize what we had as a community until I left and went someplace else. So when I came back, this is where I wanted to stay and, and be for the rest of my life. And um, I just wanted, no, let me get emotional. I really wanted to teach in public schools, and um, I remember walking in the first time to Dow and seeing, well first being interviewed by Gary, and then seeing Carol Lewin and so many of the people that had educated me, and, I'm sorry, <laughs> Dan Goodall and all the people that, you know, I got to work under. It's such an incredible group of professionals, and they really put the expectations there for you to be the best. And it was really important for me to live up to my colleagues and to work with them collaboratively and to give to other kids in the community what was given to me. So I really appreciate this. It means a ton to me. It really means a lot because it has the Gersh Tech name associated with it, and they gave so much to this community. And I'm really honored to receive this, so thank you all. for being here this afternoon to pay tribute to these individuals and our profession. It has truly been a pleasure. The teachers honored today stand for a powerful stand as a powerful reminder that quality teaching is valued at Midland Public Schools and Midland teachers make a difference. I would like to invite you all to the reception honoring our, our recipients of the Griswold Center immediately following this ceremony. Thank you for attending this afternoon and please join me one more time in honoring all of the <laughs>